I just realized I thought I was rec I just pressed the record button and uh and I for a while thought I was recording but then I realized I'm not recording. So yeah. Okay, so I'm going to type out Wonder Woman from 2017 since I'm going to get around to reviewing the sequel. I figured, well, I want to talk about it more. But now that the uh, rage has settled down, I think I'm going to actually uh, talk about this and it's really uh, the the highlight part of the, the highlight in of the whole movie and the uh, shit of the whole movie. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Look, um, what I'm trying to say is it's a, it's a guilty pleasure movie, meaning it's kind of like the Josh, every Josh sequel, including Josh 2. How, uh, how, uh, they're entertaining and engaging and, and you can watch them. And, uh, still like the characters and feel for them. But, you don't really know how you can, uh, Say how you feel for these characters, or you know, it, well, it's something. You, it's like, uh, okay, you can see these things. Uh, okay, this might be not the uh, the best film, or at least the production is nice. And uh, and that's the only thing you can say about it. Then, uh, but we really can't say anything to defend the uh, plot of characters. Then it's going. To me, that's a guilty pleasure. And so is this Wonder Woman movie with Scout Gadot when she made her convince the whole world somehow and brainwashing that she could play Wonder Woman. In other words, she failed at playing Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah. That's what the opposite of that translates. So, uh, Look, well, to your guilty pleasure, not, I realized, I think I realized what movie I was, I think I really finally got the understanding of what guilty pleasure could mean, uh, and, like, uh, I think a guilty pleasure is not feeling you should just feel prayer pressure and, like, just by... Like, I think you know, the you actually feel you should actually feel guilty for liking the film or seeing it's a good film, even though you have reasons for seeing it's a good film. I just to me, a uh, guilty pleasure means you don't really have any of that passion or towards the film, or you know, or you have the opposite happens and you have plenty of passion towards the film, but you have positive passion, but you have nothing to say. Uh, good about it, and it's, and uh, good about it, or or you don't really feel like you want to say anything good about it because you don't really have the energy because you are generally unhappy with the majority of what they had in the film and bored. So in that can like, but uh, you see, I think I. I don't like the most online critics because they keep on recommending me, Yoker, uh, to the general public, the general consumer, or just guilty pleasures to the general computers and say these are good and these are, by saying that these also are basically uh, more higher quality films than what they really are. That they know they think they are. So, but they just, I guess, decided to say it was, uh, what will get them in the most views and, uh, what will make the most money for the movie that they, uh, want to screw people over because they felt screwed over. I, that's just what I think why I hate most, generally most critics in general. 
ones who talk about movies in theaters or on shows or, I mean, by, on channels or straight to streaming or just movies in general. So, yeah, um, so, uh, to me, uh, this film as a good movie, I guess, a zero out of ten. But as a guilty pleasure with the movie, I really have nothing to say other than I was entertained and engaged from it. To me, that's guilty pleasure because of that. Uh, because I have or barely anything good to say, but some good things to say means uh, it's a guilty pleasure to me. And that's what it should be. Uh, what a guilty pleasure means should me be like. Sort of like the All of the Jaws sequels. That sequel to the original Jaws movie because the first one was the only one that was actually a good movie. Or, uh... Or Brie Larson's take on Carol Danvers in the first Captain Marvel movie that I hear won't be in the sequel, Brie Larson as Captain Marvel as Carol Danvers. Or... See a... Villain... Turn into a space cloud like in Rise of the Silver Surfer, that sequel to the 2005 Fantastic Four movie, or the 2003 Hulk movie that was again has a, a space cloud a villain, a space cloud villain. Well, well, villains basically made out of clouds, or like 2016's Doctor Strange was better to come back to the first Doctor Strange movie. Released into the MCU pro m movie. Released into the MCU and that kind of on the in movie theaters and on uh, the big screen and stuff. And how that villain, well, was again uh, just a cloud that talks like the past two ones I mentioned or. Uh, Charlotte Bowen's Black Panther movie. Or... Um... Well, that could come with most, but we'll probably be here all day. All... Only, like, forever if I came with all of them. So if I lifted all of them, so... Uh... Yeah, so, uh... One Doomerman, I I'm not I, I Wonder Woman, uh, is not really a good movie. It's a really guilty pleasure movie in reality, but I I don't know how people didn't notice this. Like you can't really say anything. We okay, okay. Well, a movie you you would come to enjoy, but you can't really say anything good about uh, or really very little good things to. Or to d defend your feelings. That tells me... That tells me you know it's a guilty pleasure. Or you in denial and not know it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, this is because you haven't seen a movie in a while. Or, and, or you know, you're kind of bored of the whole uh, movies. Uh, or you kind of... Like, uh, what, what that's what I'm saying. You're kind of bored and uh, you just want to watch a movie. Or you don't have any idea. Or sometimes we get a. Uh, or how to defend something that is good. Or don't know how to aim. Sorry. How to defend something that's good. Just have to. And then you have to think. Uh, like uh, if you're. We are like it's like. Uh, the more uh, the impression it gave on you, or the whole actual movie as a whole, and to me, if it's if like more of the impression than the actual movie as a whole, then I think that counts as guilty pleasure. If it if it's a positive impression, or uh, yeah, or sometimes it can, and sometimes the opposite can happen with an uh, actual good movie, like uh. Like, it can actually happen with an actual good movie, like the, uh, like, uh, 
The Shining, like, or Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. Like, uh, good, really, uh, quality can get overshadowed by the, uh, negative, uh, press and the ne negative first impression issues that people had. Or, like, how for Hitchcock's Vertical. Or, like, uh, Like those those first ones I hear were all like a negative first impersonations. Even though we really don't have the most things to back up their opinions or in their feelings towards the film. And this like mostly hate not because uh the uh not really hate it because or like it just because they really have reason why he the thing is a really good movie. Or is he the the whole trend that's going on with first people viewing a movie for the first time? And those are usually the ones that are traditionally are the most false to me if they go to saying such wonderful thing and praising the film or praising the film for his absolute shit. And calling it guilty pleasure, even when it's not when you really feel like in your heart, in your, in your soul, and in your veins that it really is a good movie. It has a decent free act structure with really likable, relatable characters. Or the uh, people could say all oh, negative things and not praise it all, but it's trash on it. Like, uh, and all these three things can happen with a good or a bad movie. And hindsight. Depending on if, uh, um, well, uh, depending on uh, the whole first impression that left the, on the public. Or even though it didn't really left on you, but like, for example, a bad movie is definitely the first time in a movie. And, uh, then there are movies that are not bad, but not good. But you feel um, because your feelings are somewhere in between. Uh, I think it's this average because you know you don't you don't really feel like like that excited towards the film, but you don't really have the energy to hate on it. So you're kind of in the middle of it, or you do have plain reasons to hate on, but you just enjoy it anyway. That last one is a guilty pleasure to me. So. uh... And I think, uh, whatever would be the opposite of a guilty pleasure would be the opposite of what the, uh, trend is and what your, how your feelings would be in reverse mode. And it would just be, just be a movie that's not so bad that is bad, that's good, but all oh, that's good, that's a guilty pleasure, but only so bad that it is bad. Like, you just, you don't really hate you like you only like it as an entertainment point of view. You just like straight up hate it in every way. He, he, your point is to hate to say about it. Why you think about it? You have every feeling to hate on it. To me, that would be uh, Emma Sean's last day of Enter or Robert Downey's first Iron Man movie from 2008 that started the MCU launch. Now, I have been on all these sides, like, I have been on this side that, uh, and even on to the two sides on hating a guilty pleasure and saying this, and, uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, I'm even on, uh, loving guilty pleasure and saying it's actually good, even though I don't really have anything to say about it, but I was often on the opposite say, like, realizing it's a guilty pleasure, even though I don't have anything to say, it's not entertaining nonetheless. Or engaging. Like, uh, you have every reason to hate yourself to accept the whole entertaining and engaging part. You, other than that, you have every reason to hate because you don't have any reason to, uh, say that much about it or praise it that much, you know? And, uh, so, um...
I've been on all three of these sides, and like, including the side that realizes what it is, but still finds it. And now it's a, as the thing, uh, roughly put together the film. I have seen a film for movies I haven't seen before, and versus movies I have seen before. I've been on all of these sides and had all of the, these different experiences. For me, it was, it was, if it can, for me, it can be a movie I've watched once or a few times after this first viewing, so, uh, yeah. That's probably why I think I originally said I uh, like the Black Pants movie with Chadwick Baldwin and, uh, Brie Larson's, uh, Chad Marco because of the whole trend that was going on. Saying, one was saying these films were really good. The other one was saying this film was really bad. And we were last in the movie. And, you know, I think the reason why I was on defense on Bleep Rossin's Captain Marvel because the trend was going, it was, the be- it was like the worst thing possible. When it's not the worst thing possible to me, so I decided to defend the movie. And when people were like, uh, um, were, were kind of appraising Black Panther, uh, Child Bolden by Panther from 2018. It's for a saying last Black Panther movie that he gets a solo film as to Child, but he's dead now. It's like feet underground. So, uh, I still why I hate like that movie when it came out. And, uh, and, uh, then, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I don't really have anything to, uh, say about my opinion, and yet I'm joining, I think that this thing counts a guilty pleasure, not really, and both can count as a piece of shit from, but can still count as a guilty pleasure nonetheless, for Brie Larson's Captain Marvel from 2018, I mean 19, or 18, or whatever, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel came out of the, that took place in the MCU, okay, and Chadwick Bowles in his Black Panther movie, titled Black Panther, and... Then you have other movies, I feel, that you really love at first time. But then when you see it a second time, you still like the film. You have plenty of things to say about it, But you have mixed feelings at the same time. Uh, as much as... You have mixed negative feelings as much as... Mixed, you have positive feelings as much as uh, negative feelings towards the film that you can say and praise the film. So to me, that can count as a mediocre film. Or something above mediocre. Like, like that would be a 6 out of 10. For me, it's mostly the majority of the Avengers movies. Except for Age of Ultron, which that starts to get, uh, that one goes a, a little bit above, uh, like slightly above, and, uh, uh, above average, that's a 7 out of 10. We're somewhere in between, uh, really, really good. And also in between a really, really average. Those scores are to me. So, uh. And, um. Then I talk about the Avengers film many times, and none of them are really that praised against, except for Age of Ultron to me. And I think probably the reason why I think Age of Ultron is the best Avengers film because it's the one that the Avengers film, like, you can make out the most detail and the little things of the characters' designs and them not just having all characters covered in chalk and cement, as in concrete. Uh, in other words, solid concrete. So, uh... And most of that has the only and what that has to do with for me for the Avengers film is the color grading, and this has uh, made it a lot more hot to enjoy it, even the guilty pleasures or could really tell what's a really good movie or could tell what's a really bad movie that much hotter, or could tell what's a so bad that it's actually a bad movie that much hotter also because. You know, most people like for, well, for me anyway, the uh, visuals of the uh, 
movies uh, is a big part of it. And I think the most one that can make your film room and visual more than any bad CGI effect could ruin your visual style of your film is the color grading uh, whole thing. And color contracts. So, uh, one, uh, yeah, so, uh, like you, like, uh, it, this, this is for the people who think that Marvel's coloring the God Fix before Far From, uh, when, uh, the most recent film is Far From Home, and saying that Marvel fixed the coloring after the first Avengers movie, and, uh, from 2004 when it just got worse in hindsight, and, uh, those who are saying the opposite, I give, I have, this messes the finger to deliver to you in competent buffoons. And, uh, you basically just being blinded by nostalgia. It's not really a healthy thing to me, uh, to like, like a film based off of nostalgia. That's why I don't like the film. I just, like, uh, I, uh, I, I like the, I mostly, uh, or, uh, Unless it's the, uh, whole, uh, like, uh, I'm losing track here. What I'm trying to say is, uh, whole liking thing based on nostalgia or hating thing based on nostalgia to me is just unhealthy. And it makes you go crazy. So, you gotta be like, uh, be more laid back is what I'm trying to say when it comes to hating a movie and, uh, disliking a movie, because both can, both sides can cloud your judgment, so, uh, your best judgment of your, of your, of the best version of yourself, so, uh, of your inner self, soul, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, the same goes for, like, uh, uh, this ties into guilty pleasures, also. Uh, yeah, this, this has to do some of us, uh, Somehow, just imagine, like, somehow tie this in with the whole guilty pleasure concept if, um, you're falling along, but, uh, not me, because I'm not falling along, because I'm getting confused, I'm just making this up, I express my feelings as I go, okay? Before I get to the review of Wonder Woman. So, yeah. And, that's why Wonder Woman has a guilty pleasure from, with Gal Dyke. From 2017, the first live action Wonder Woman movie, theatrically. Uh, from 2017, titled Wonder Woman, gets a 10 out of 10 on the uh, guilty pleasure score, and gets a 0 out of 10 on the actual uh, good movie score because the guilty pleasure is something in a movie that I don't have, like, really that much to back it up on my feelings or my opinion to the movie. So, uh, yeah. All my thoughts, so you know, all the above. So, um, let's talk about the movie Wonder Woman from 2017. So, the movie opens up with a young Diana watching Amazon train, pretending that she's trained with the Amazons, and then, uh, she eventually does start training. I can't remember how. Uh, that's yeah. Uh, uh so uh, to me, this is how I know it's also uh, I like guilty pleasures. Some guilty pleasures are more memorable and some are more forgettable than others. Just like some good movies are more forgettable than others, or, or more memorable than others. Or the same goes for bad movies. Just bad movies. Those are just the worst. And that would be so bad that the bad movies. And, uh. And not Guilty Pleasure, which are so bad that the good movies. Uh. Yeah, so, uh. Some can be basically be more forgettable, and others can be more rememberable than others for each free. Movie types. So, um, one woman starts training and uh, failing miserably, 
And then one day she gets the drop on her her trainer. And everybody's horrified and guesses she just runs away and blah blah blah. After we get brief this is after bedtime's her origin story of how she came to be was told by us for a mother as a bedtime story of how she was born, which was got sculpted in a sand and the god blessed the piece of sand that got turned into a girl that uh her mother sculpted out of. And uh that's where the movie for me starts to fall apart as an actual good movie. Because here's the thing, uh it probably should have showed how she got born instead of just telling us as a bedtime story and say so because people wouldn't really think that that's actually a joke or like, exaggeration, probably. Like I did. And then I realized, oh, wait, that, cause that's not an exaggeration or a joke. That's actual, uh, explaining part of the movie. <laughs> of one woman's origin. Going back to our breasts. So, uh, because I know, because I've seen one of my adaptations before this, that were all animated in that was also the origin story of her birth from in the comic lord. <laughs> and also that's the story they use for a birth and animation form. So, and then it gets weird when Steve Trevor shows up after he crash landing in the ocean one was saving her. 